G'day, if you're in the market or you've recently purchased or you're just considering maybe at the moment a US truck, a Silverado, a Sierra, a Ram, Ford F-Series, one of the things that you want to consider or just be aware of going in is that they're, a little, they're quite a distinctly different vehicle to an Australian model utility. And we've covered this before uh, in some of the other videos. You can have a look on this channel for the other videos we've done about things that you want to consider before you jump into one of these trucks. But one of the things I wanted to revisit here because it's come up just recently is one of the principal things in maintenance that you want to be aware of if you're going to buy one of these trucks. And that, re that relates to the front end suspension and steering, suspension all around pretty much, but particularly steering and suspension of the front end of these trucks, particularly if you're going to own one for a long time or you're going to buy a used one. I've just uh, had a conversation this week with, and this is a conversation I've had with a few uh, US truck owners over time now. I've owned a couple of these things, F250 uh, and, the, and the Ram series. And one thing that's common with pretty much all of them, and this particular individual um, had discussed, wanted to have a discussion around his Silverado, uh, they have a, 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 there's a different expectation Australian owners should have jumping into one of these trucks off the back of owning an Australian dual cab utility or an Australian four wheel drive, depending on the model. But just for example, uh, I have a Toyota Land Cruiser. It's done just shy of 400,000 kilometers. Uh, and the, on the farm, we have a couple of Toyota Hiluxes. They've done all of around, you know, plus or minus 200,000 Ks. We've had uh, Rangers, we've had Tritons. We've run them up anywhere to around two to 300,000 Ks. Uh, and then you know might have moved them on or whatever but one thing that I've never had to do with any of those vehicles is do a comprehensive and complete steering rebuild and suspension rebuild sure uh, my Land Cruisers had new shocks put in it a uh, second set of shocks put in it we had to change over a CV boot that had cracked the CV was fine but the CV boot had cracked and was leaking oil needed to change over the CV boot Hilux has had that too we've had to change over the CV boot uh, on one of our old TF Rodeos, it had done, you know, about 400,000 Ks and we had to do some, uh, some steering components who got a bit loose in the steering, but hadn't really had to do a complete comprehensive steering and suspension rebuild on any of those vehicles. Um, certainly not with the regularity of one of these things has. And this is one of the things you want to know going in because this poor Silverado, I don't, I'm not saying poor because he bought a Silverado, he just wasn't aware of this when he purchased it. So he purchased a, a pretty late model. It's not very old uh, Silverado. It had done about 120,000 kilometers. So that's not, not much, certainly not much for that truck. He paid a considerable amount of money for it, a lot of money. And it's nothing to look at, particularly late model ones of these that are asking well into the six figures, even though they've done under a, over 100,000 kilometers. You know, it might be late model, it might be one of the bigger ones, like a 3500, it might have significant upgrades or whatever. Uh, but, you know, it's not, it's not a surprise to find them on the market for over $100,000, even with over, you know, 100,000, 150,000 kilometers. Anyway, he's purchased this truck, um, took it for a test drive, thought it was okay, had a look over, condition and everything looked pretty good. It had been a tourer, as most of these vehicles are, particularly if you've got a late model one with you know, a reasonably high amount of kilometers. Chances are it's been pulling a van around Australia. He's taken it in to get a, he's brought it in the state, brought it back to the state and sought to get a roadworthy certificate to get it registered. And the place that he took it to said, look, we can't roadworthy, it needs um, uh, a, a front end rebuild. And he's gone, okay, well, what does that mean? They said, yeah, well, ball joints, we've got bushings, we've got sway bar end links, we've got, um, uh, uh, we've got uni joints that need to be changed out. Um, you need a complete front end rebuild. There's too much slack in it uh, and it needs to be done. And just in the last week, watching a, uh, an online forum on social media, uh, there was a similar comment by someone extraordinarily frustrated on his RAM because 15,000 Ks after changing all of his ball joints over after a, a touring trip over some fairly you know, reasonably extensive, I would say, based on what he said, 
uh, travel down some dirt roads, he needed to replace his ball joints. There was enough movement in them that the ball joints needed to be replaced. Now it is a possibility that that, that initial replacement wasn't done very well. Maybe they used a poor quality part. But in any event, that's an extraordinarily low amount of time uh, to have to replace a ball joint. And if you're going to come off, this particular Silverado owner was just absolutely dismayed because this was going to be thousands of dollars to replace, to do the full front end rebuild. He had no time nor capacity to do the work himself. So we had to rely on the workshop who had, was going to do the roadworthy certificate for him. And they're a competent workshop, no problems there. Uh, but to do all the parts for him, there's going to be another uh, bill in the thousands, thousands of dollars after spending a heap of money on these trucks, first walk in the gate and he's got to do a front end rebuild. This is something that is fairly common with these trucks. They have very heavy engines, a lot of weight under the front end. They are heavy trucks. You know, this one's got a rolling weight of over three tons. Now that's a considerable jump from my Toyota Hilux, for example. You know, it's not surprising that they weigh so much more. You know, this is six cylinders, big heavy block as opposed to four cylinder diesel in my Hilux. You know, it's a bigger footprint, it's heavier duty all around, bigger transmission, all of this stuff's gonna add more weight. It's not surprising that they weigh what they do, it just means that they're heavy on the front end and the suspension. And it's something that you wanna factor in if you're going to buy it. I had a, um, a dialogue with someone online recently who was looking to buy a new Ram. And they said, you know, what are the things you should, I should know, what are the things uh, I should look for. I sent them a video that I'd done on things you should look for. Uh, and they were coming, uh, they wanted to have trouble-free motoring. They were gonna do, you know, about four or five years, or say three or four years of touring. I think I'm reducing the numbers a bit there. Three or four years of, of touring. You know, they, they were planning to do, you know, well over 30,000 Ks a year. I said, if you're gonna buy a used one, um, you're probably gonna factor in a front-end rebuild, if not at purchase, when you, at some time during your tenure, are you going to have to pull it down? And she said, oh, well, actually, I'd actually like to be able to you know, do that touring and then probably do 200,000 uh, plus Ks on it. And I said, well, if you're buying a vehicle with you know, 150,000 Ks on the clock, is what they, were, what they thought, somewhere between 100 and 200, and you're going to do another 200, if it's never been done, you've probably got at least two steering and uh, front end rebuilds in that time. Now, sure, you can, you can bash and crash your Toyota Land Cruiser over some really rough terrain, uh, and, and force a you know, premature wear of suspension and steering components. That's for sure, you can do that with anything. But it's just par for the course with these trucks more so than really anything else. Uh, and it's so much so that I've seen some people now who have owned multiple, you know, they try and keep on the new side of uh, these trucks, trade them over every few years, uh, acknowledging the short tenure of ball joints, bushes and steering components. And oh, that's just, that's just part of the course. Yeah, you're going to do them every 80,000 Ks or something. I just, you're just going to do that. Now, I think you can push it longer than that if you do a proper rebuild and look after your truck. Keep up, you know, if you've got uh, just in the little things, you know, you think about the major things with your ball joints and stuff, but you may forget the little things like, you know, if you've got greasable sway bar links, it's not a big deal, but, you know, you might forget to do that. You know, just check things all the time. Oh, is that correct? Oh, I've got a bush that's, that's tearing out there. I'll get a bush replacement kit. Um, and just do that now. Um, you know, we've got the bonnet up today because I'm, that's what I'm doing. It's service time and I'm under there and I'm checking all my steering components and I do have a bush that needs replacing. Thankfully, I have a bush kit here that I keep spare and I'll replace out the bush. But if you look and go, oh, that bush is a bit natty, I'll just let it go and then slack starts to get in there. You're gonna get premature wear. You're gonna get premature death of your steering components. You have gotta check them, particularly if you're doing your servicing yourself. Or even if you take it to you know, somebody on, on the way who is just a general mechanic, yeah, I'll do the service, they'll do your oil and filters and stuff. Um, they might do a quick check over, but they're not gonna have the parts in stock. If you're moving on, they're not gonna replace. They might flag it with you or they might not because they're not gonna do the work. So you, you do need to keep an eye on these things, but you wanna bake this into the cake. When you're going in to uh, owning one of these trucks, you really need to bake this into the cake. You want to make sure that you know that if you're going to do any sort of rough driving, you, like if you do, if you stay on the blacktop for the entire duration of your ownership with one of these, you will stretch it out. You will stretch it out. Um, you know, you might get 200,000 Ks out of it before you do the rebuild. But I would suggest that that's probably about the limit. You're gonna you're gonna be doing work on it. Um, 
you know, at 200, if not before. Some of the tenure that the, uh, some of the later model vehicles are saying to me that they've done their ball joints and bushes, you know, ball joints at 40,000 Ks, at 80,000 Ks, that seems awfully, awfully low to me, but that's what they tell me. I have no reason to doubt them. But if you're going into owning one of these trucks and you're not aware of that, you could get quite dismayed. Because if you don't do any of the work yourself, the running cost of this, just in servicing, you jump from a Toyota Hilux or an Isuzu D-Max and you jump into one of these and you're not gonna do anything yourself, which is fine, keep the warranty, yep, that's, that's perfectly reasonable. But the cost of servicing these trucks is going to be more probably than what you're used to. And you go, okay, well that's not, a, that's not so bad. But if you say, it's gonna be using more fuel, it's gonna cost me more to insure, it's gonna cost me more to service it, and I'm gonna have additional servicing uh, requirements on these trucks, particularly in the front end, um, you gotta factor that in. Now, I, I do acknowledge that you know people will say, oh, you know, well, half a million kilometers on those Cummins engines in the Rams or the Power Strokes in the Ford, depending on the model, um, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll do half a million kilometers, mate. And yeah, if you look after them and you've got a good engine under the bonnet, that's certainly true. But having said that, there's gonna be other things that you're gonna to have to do along the way. And obviously, that is only as good as, um, as your maintenance and what you're asking the engine to do. Plenty of people's stories of, you know, even just transmission rebuilds, uh, because they've really, really asked a lot of their trucks uh, and they've had, a, they've had premature wear, they may have had premature death. They're not bad trucks, I own one. Um, I really like the truck, I, I quite enjoy driving it. Uh, it, I love the flexibility of it, but I knew that going in. I knew, I, before I even bought my F250 back in the day, um, I had a, a fellow who uh, was ex, uh, out of North America, had owned F250s all his life back in the home country, and then owned the same here as soon as he moved here. And he's always maintained one, he's, he's, still, he's still got one. Uh, during all his tenure in Australia, and he told me the pitfalls of it. You know, look, that's, that's the way it is. You get you get to redo your suspension components. And he actually had a Ford Ranger for a while and loved how trouble free it was comparative to his F two fifty, doing massive miles and just not having the you know the front end wear. They're good trucks. There's lots of positives about them. I think the engines are one of the probably the biggest advantages of them. But I've seen this too many times now, people going into the truck, trucks they don't know, um, got to do a front end rebuild. And if they own the truck for a long period of time, they own it for 200, 250,000 Ks, it wouldn't be unusual for that to come around twice. And they go, what the heck? We just did this not that long ago. What the hell's going on? Why do we have to rebuild this suspension and these steering components again? How come the ball joints only lost it, lasted 80,000 Ks? What's going on here? Now, should the engineering be better than that? Yeah, it should be, but it's a symptom of these heavy, heavy trucks, heavy engines over the front, um, over the front suspension. You do want to be aware of this, and in risk of repeating myself, know this before you go in. Speak to owners that have them and talk to them about it, because a lot of times owners will, especially if they've owned these trucks for a long period of time, oh, best truck I've ever owned, mate. Never put a spanner on it, absolutely beautiful. But then if you dig a little bit, and they go, oh yeah, no, I've had to, I had to rebuild the front end. Well, that's putting a spanner on it, isn't it? Oh yeah, but you just have to do that. That's just, that's just what these trucks do. That's actually a really common comment. You know, where someone will go, I've just done the, I, I, a, a chap I read his dialogue, um, this again online, he go, oh well, geez, I've had, you know, ball joints fail, I've, had, I've done two of them in a, two, I've had a, a, the factory set from factory and I've had to replace it twice in 100,000 Ks, I've had to do all my ball joints, what the heck is going on here? Now I've got other problems in the, in the front end suspension. I've got to fix other components I've, they've got to replace. What is wrong with this thing? And people replying, oh yeah, that's, that's quite good, mate. I've had to do it less than that. Oh no, that's, that's just how it goes. So you don't often get these things come out of conversations with owners. Oh, you know, I love the truck, absolutely fantastic. And just because they accept these things as just one of the perils of ownership, if you like, it doesn't necessarily come out to you. So you want to know about that going in. So they're not bad trucks. As I said, I own one, but I know that. And, um, you know, and I monitor my suspension components regularly. Uh, my, my servicing interval is far shorter than the Cummins one. Like the Cummins one, you can push out 30,000 Ks if you want to. I do it every 10, which is way, way, way shorter. But I want to, be able, I want to give myself 
the rigor of checking my truck over thoroughly at a regular, regular service interval. That's why I do it every 10,000 Ks. And that doesn't just include oils and filters. It includes everything on the truck, um, particularly the front end and suspension. Because you, you can elongate the life of your su suspension if you maintain it correctly. And that's what I advise you to do. Uh, and if you're getting servicing done by a non-specialty mechanic, uh, who's just a capable diesel mechanic, that's perfectly fine. But just make sure they are aware that they really need to spend some time on these other components of the truck uh, that, that are known to wear so that you can hopefully get in front of these things, make, your, make those components last as long as you possibly can. It's going to make your ownership experience far better. I hope this was useful for you. Thanks for watching.